KPN is a Dutch telecommunication service provider who offer everything from fixed line provision to IPTV. They are also the largest mobile network operator by customer number in the Netherlands. In today's video, I am going to explain the spectrum that KPN possess and what they use to broadcast for their 2G, 3G and 4G networks before moving on to showing examples of their masts, including the antennas that are used and what the masts can be recognized by and the type of vendor broadcast equipment they use as well. KPN operates their network on conventional European frequency bands. So for 4G services, they have paired 10 megahertz of 800 megahertz, which is band 20. They have 20 megahertz paired on 1800 megahertz, which is band three. And they have 10 megahertz paired of 2600 megahertz, which is band seven. They also have 30 megahertz unpaired of 2600 megahertz, which is for time division duplex operation, which is band 38. Typically sites have band 20 and band three on them, which provides 30 megahertz of downlink bandwidth, which can facilitate a large amount of capacity and high throughput performance with high capacity sites then gaining the 2600 megahertz spectrum generally. Furthermore, in some areas, 2100 megahertz spectrum is being refarmed from 3G to 4G. So then that will also be added to almost every site because almost every site in the Netherlands that KPN operates broadcasts 2100 megahertz. With regards to spectrum used for legacy services, 900 megahertz is deployed. They have 10 megahertz of which half of it is used for 3G services and half of it is used for 2G services. And of course that operates in a paired manner. The 2100 megahertz band, however, is rather more complicated with KPN having two paired blocks of 10 megahertz on the band. So they can operate up to four 3G carriers at a time dependent on, of course, the deployment they've chosen and any refarming deployed in the area. In terms of hardware vendors and equipment used on site, Ericsson is the vendor of the BTS equipment used for 2G, the Node B for 3G and the E Node B for 4G and commonly Catherine antennas are seen across the sites for the actual uh, transmission. A good way to typically recognize KPN sites is that they have strips of tape along the bottom of the antennas and the number of strips indicates the sector number of that or those antennas. So one strip is sector one, two strips is sector two and so on. A typical low capacity KPN site looks something like this. So it has 900 MHz 2G and 3G, 2100 MHz 3G for now, and 800 MHz 4G. Typically on KPN sites, bands are diplexed, so combined together. And this site is no different where 800 MHz and 900 MHz are diplexed together to feed into a single low band cathrine antenna. Meanwhile, the upper antenna carries just 2100 MHz. The first medium capacity site is very similar in that it carries the 900 MHz, the 2100 MHz and the 800 MHz. However, it also has 1800 MHz for the additional 4G capacity. Physical appearance wise, it's also very similar to the low capacity site in that there's a single low band cathrine antenna which is lower down and carries the diplexed 800 megahertz and 900 megahertz services. However, instead of there being a single high band cathrine antenna at the top, there is now a dual high band antenna which has four ports so that it can carry two separate high band frequencies. And of course that is so that the 1800 megahertz and the 2100 megahertz can be fed through separate antenna elements in the panel and therefore have separate tilt and operation. It can be noted, however, that there are diplexes marked on this schematic. However, they are simply to reduce the number of feeders climbing the mast. 
as there is a diplexer on on either side, the frequencies are diplexed together, but then then they are diplexed apart at the antenna end so that they can be independently operated within the antenna elements themselves. The second medium capacity mast design uses a dual band cathrine antenna with low ports and high ports as well as a single high band cathrine antenna. Much as on the first example, the low band mast example, the single high band cathrine is carrying 2100 MHz 3G and this then leaves the dual low and high band cathrine antenna for the remaining frequencies and much as on the previous two examples, 800 and 900 MHz have been diplexed together and then fed into the low band ports of the cathrine dual band antenna and the remaining high ports are carrying the 1800 MHz 4G. The final example I wish to talk about carries the maximal FDD spectrum portfolio so as the 900 MHz, the 2100 MHz and the 800 MHz 4G, 1800 MHz 4G and 2600 MHz FDD 4G as well. And this uses a 10 port cathrine antenna which has two sets of low band ports and then three sets of high band ports and then they're all just fed directly into the antenna. Inevitably this video is not an exhaustive guide to the masts that exist within the Netherlands on the KPN network because I was only there for a short period and for example I did not come across any 4G on 2100 MHz or any TDD 2600 MHz band 38 either. So I'm sure in order to deploy especially the band 38 some changes might have occurred to the sites although I guess they could have diplexed it with the FDD 2600 or equivalent dependent on ex how what exactly their strategy is really. Thanks for watching this video about KPN in the Netherlands. I've also recently produced a video on T-Mobile Netherlands and therefore that leaves me with Vodafone Netherlands and Tele2 Netherlands with videos scheduled to produce. So I hope to see you on those ones.